Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, listen, I want to welcome you guys to Wisdom Wednesdays. I hope you've been paying attention to uh, your thoughts, your emotions, negativity. I hope you guys have been fueling your body, loving on yourself, making sure that you're getting some great nutrient-dense foods to keep yourselves energized, to keep your vibrations in alignment with creation. And I hope you've been having a fantastic week. Uh, for those of you who always tune in, mwah, of course you know I love you and I want to thank you so much and I'm so grateful for you and for those of you that are new to the channel do me a favor subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you can stay connected with me well I want to welcome you to sing Shonda inspires nations to grow and I often will refer to my family as my singers or my VSPs vibrational singing people so welcome to Wednesday Wednesdays well listen guys uh, you know I've, I've been thinking um, in our world today we just have so uh, many issues within our world today and of course you know me doing what I do I get to talk to a, a wide variety of people and I just noticed that it's a lot of people that are broken uh, in different places uh, in life you know it could be with your self-esteem um, it could be you know financially it could be broken from a relationship you know broken from your past your upbringing your childhood broken physically you know just ailments in your body and so I wanted to horn in and I wanted to talk to that today you know in our world it's broken is despised you know it's neglected uh, people will run or abandon you simply for being broken simply for being broken um, there's no longer a need for you people will discard you they will walk away from you um, unfortunately it happens you know women are women are discarded men are discarded children are discarded uh, you know just your jobs people are discarding their jobs their families and even our bodies, even spiritually, we're discarding ourselves because of brokenness. No one really wants to deal with brokenness. You know, marriages today, if I just think back, you know, to my grandparents and my great grandparents, you know, they stay married forever. But today, you know, if the marriage is broken, so often, so many times, people run from the marriage instead of working it out and trying to make it work. You know, people run from it. They're no longer to, no longer willing to engage in healing that marriage back to wholeness because nothing is perfect. People, you know, we run from being parents. We run from being just good people because of brokenness. So, you know, it most definitely needs to be addressed. You know, uh, in our world also that we live in today, I mean, if you look around you today, wherever you are you will see brokenness look at the you know the TV shows you know our social media uh, you know the internet in general newspapers magazines in our schools in our colleges and universities in our places of employment and even at church you know we see brokenness people um, that are leaders you know that are broken and and the you know the church is for broken people but when it's a silent epidemic that's spreading worldwide and it's killing people spiritually it's a problem so I wanted to uh, address that today you know when I think about brokenness it's almost like it's a dysfunction like a dysfunctional family you know dysfunction kind of sticks around for so long and we become accepting of it and we do nothing about it it's like a silent epidemic that we all experience today but you know I am just crazy enough and radical enough to know and believe that it can be changed and I know those of us that are consciously awake spiritually awake we know that it can be changed you know those of us that are not living in the matrix that are very consciously aware of the impact that we can have in our society today we know that your brokenness will resurrect you to spiritual wholeness your brokenness will resurrect you to spiritual wholeness. And so that is the message today. Our Father, you know, in heavenly places, you know, some refer to him as God, creator, source, is attracted 
to your brokenness. You know, it's a beautiful thing to him because he views us as his vessels, his extension. And he knows what we are, period, in spite of our brokenness. So like him, you know, I believe in restoration. And I'm going to show you some examples today to where, you know, restoration is the byproduct of brokenness. So when you see a broken person or when I see a broken person as a healer, I see an opportunity to impact their lives and an opportunity to display love outward. I don't have to worry about receiving it because I have enough inside of myself that I don't need it. But I'm on a mission to aid in the restoration of this broken world and of broken people. So today, of course, I want to talk about physical brokenness with you guys today. I want to talk about spiritual brokenness with you guys today. And then I also want to turn it around and I want to talk to you guys about restoration and spiritual wholeness spiritual wholeness. So I want to go ahead, you know, I always start out uh, with just defining things. And I want to make sure that I do that for you guys today. Okay. So I want to make sure that I do that for you guys. So if we look at, uh, you know, physical, a physical brokenness, first of all, it's a physical form. Okay. It's something that's actually related to the body as opposed to the mind. Uh, that's physical, the physical part of things. Perceived through senses as opposed to the mind. It's real, it's actual, it's visible. So you can see it. Whereas if it's spiritual, it's relating to or affecting the human spirit or soul opposed to the physical world. It's non-physical, it's intangible, it's sacred, it's holy, it's divine. That's what spirit is. And when you resurrect something, you restore it like a dead person or a dead thing back to life. As healers, we have that ability to touch the depths of someone's soul and just display Christ and bring them right on back to life. So that's what resurrection is. It's to revive something, to practice it, the memory of something, bring it to brand new, it's vigor, it's to regenerate it, to revitalize it to restore it, to stimulate it, to reestablish it, or to relaunch it. So if I was to milk my message today, it would be that your visible form of brokenness will be brought back to life, to wholeness. It would be rejuvenated. It would be revitalized. It would be reestablished, restored today to a spiritual wholeness. It means the divine energy, vibration, power, anointing without blemish, just whole. So your spiritual brokenness will resurrect you to spiritual wholeness. And so when I thought about that, the very first uh, scripture that I thought about if we're talking about physical brokenness. Physical brokenness could be in many forms. It could be a broken broken limbs, an arm or a leg. It could be a disease in your body. It could be a blind person, a person who can't hear. You know, those are all examples of being physically broken. So when I think about that, I go over to the scripture, Mark 8, 22, where Jesus healed the blind man. He, he spit on his eyes and he restored his blindness back to him. He restored his blindness. See, that spiritual, that, that physical brokenness, he resurrected that thing to spiritual wholeness because he impacted his sight. So, of course, that gave him confidence and got him into alignment with the vibration of our creator. So, that's one example. The second example I want to refer to today is Mark 5, 21 through 43, when it talks about how Jesus goes into, he was awesome. He was just like relentless. I absolutely love it. He goes into this town to heal, uh, to, to resurrect this 12-year-old this child that was dying. And so, he enters into this town. Of course, you know the story. He goes through the crowd. It's been a woman in a situation where the doctors could not heal her with the issue of blood for like 12 years. And so she, she just believed that if she could touch him, that he could heal her. And of course, that's exactly what happened. He felt it leave out of him. We talked about this several weeks ago. 
But then what's the interesting part, if we go on down here in the scripture, Jesus told them, you know, they were telling him to hurry up because the girl was dying. And so before he got to the location, he said, don't be afraid, just believe. Because when you believe something as crazy as it sounds, even death can be postponed with your belief. Because that's how strong the vibration of belief is. It has the ability to cause a change in the atmosphere, in the spiritual realm of life. When you link up to the right source, when you link up to God, it is absolutely nothing that you cannot do. And Jesus knew that because he is a living example. He is the Lamb of God. He was totally in alignment. And he had the power. And you have the power. And I'm going to prove it to you. Don't be afraid. Just believe. And when he got there, he healed the little girl. She was 12 years old. 12 disciples. The significance of the number 12. I don't even want to get into that. Because <laughs> I can milk that and just think myself into a beyond happy situation. So again, you know, if we think about that, that was, those were physical situations of brokenness that was restored by belief, by faith, by being in a spiritual alignment and knowing that all things are possible. I want to go on over here and give you an example of uh, spiritual spiritual brokenness. Spiritual broken, uh, an example of that would be a broken heart. Uh, an example of that could also be sadness, depression, anxiety, fear, anger, evil thoughts. Those are all examples of like a spiritual. Because see, you can't touch any of that. That's an energy thing. Totally out of alignment with God, creation, the source. So if we look at this, at Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saved those who are crushed in spirit and low energy and low vibrations that are out of alignment with who he is. He restores you. He restores you. God looks as brokenness as an opportunity to reveal himself, his glory to you. We are healers. He has strategically placed us throughout this world to do his business and to bring people back to the original way of doing things, back into alignment with him. And so he looks at it. He's not like the world would look at it. The world wants to despise you. They want to throw you away for being broken. But I'm just here to let you know today that you're beautifully broken though. Because if I could ever have an encounter with you, I promise your life would never be the same. Because I would breathe life into that broken situation and restore you to spiritual wholeness, revitalize you and resurrect the situation because that's the power that we have. God sees that as an opportunity for restoration. That takes me on down to Isaiah 61 and 1. When Isaiah talks about spiritual wholeness, that the Lord, the sovereign, the spirit of the Lord was on him. He, uh, because the Lord had anointed him to proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent him to bind up the brokenhearted, to proc proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness and low vibration for the prisoners. If we go on down in the same chapter, verse three, and provide those who grieve, who are saddened, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. But to bestow on you a crown of beauty. God want to take ashes and give you beauty instead. Want to keep you in alignment with his will. Ashes, to giving you beauty instead. The oil of joy instead of mourning. Don't cry. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of just pure despair. And he wants to call you. See, he will take your brokenness. Put you back together stronger, wiser, more vibrant than ever before. Pure unrecognizable. You know, like when you're going through a situation and your life is turned upside down, people don't recognize you. Sometimes you gain weight. Sometimes your face breaks out. Sometimes you become a recluse. Don't nobody even see you. But if you ever have an encounter with the spirit of the living God, the creator of all mankind, he will put you back together stronger than you were initially. 
stronger than you were. You will be totally unrecognizable. You will be new. You will be an oak of righteousness. Rooted. Rooted in him. A planning. And he loves that because it gives him glory. It's a display of his splendor. A display of his splendor. Awesomeness. Just pure awesome. Because that's the kind of God we serve. And to let you know that you have the power. Singers. You have the power to help with this because Jesus said over in John 14, 12, verse 12, I tell you the truth that anyone ha who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you say in my name, whatever you ask in my name, as long as it's in alignment so that the Son may bring glory to God. You have the power. Don't let anyone discourage you of your brokenness. There's nothing wrong with you. You're exactly where you need to be because that's an opportunity to make you stronger. So in closing today, I want to give you this quote. And the quote says, how do you know that you were meant to be a healer? The response because I kept falling in love with broken people. Then why are you alone? Because I'm broken too. So I'm falling in love with myself to get a taste of my own medicine. To get a taste of my own medicine. See, to resolve the epidemic of brokenness in our world today, you have to learn to love yourself before anything else. The way that our creator loves you. To allow God to heal you beautifully. The beautiful broken parts of you. Back to wholeness. So you'll be stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Total alignment with God. Self-controlled. Wiser. Yes, because this lost world needs your touch of wholeness to be restored. You know why? Because brokenness, and listen to me, brokenness is a requirement to wholeness and greatness. Think about that. Mwah. I love you guys. And to my Lipscomb singers, I appreciate you. I'm coming to see you next week. I love you so much. Mwah! Shout out to you guys. Have a great week. Bye now.